Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video we are at the Duna window and I intend to fulfill some of the Duna missions with a space plane hopefully. And I don't intend for it to be a crewed space plane. We're gonna wait on... well I might send a separate lander but uh, because I'm not sure about space planes we just want an uncrewed space plane for now but I'll have a crew module uh, for future use. It's gotta be a test flight basically. And we want to have drones recover these modules from Ike and Duna and bring them back to Kerbin. Uh, so that is part of the plan. Our Dres mission is on its way. But first, I need the full shuttle parts, you know, the big size Mark III cockpit and all. And we don't have quite enough uh, science for that. So I decided to check up on my EVE mega station. And it's already full up on science, which is sort of embarrassing. Uh, it's so easy. So, all right, I'm going to transmit the science. We've got the power, we've got all these solar panels and everything. So, it's going. And it's still getting more science per day. 3.4 science per day. We haven't even put that much data in it. It's sort of sad how easy it is once you get the science lab. Okay, 499 science. Well, let's go to the research center and we can pick up the heavy aerodynamics, which I wanted. And I suppose we can get the large landing gear. That might be helpful too. Um, this is rover stuff. That specialized control I don't need for what I'm going to do, so that's okay. Um, shielded docking port? Not really. I'm just checking whether there's anything I absolutely need otherwise. Um, those tanks, the that form factor of tank is helpful. But not necessary necessary, so I'll just get the landing gear. So our goal here is actually fairly ambitious because we do want this space plane to land at Kerbin after recovering the modules. It doesn't, strictly speaking, have to land at the KSC, but we're going all the way out to Duna and back with these modules. So we're going to have a cargo bay of some kind. It depends how big. We also want it to be able to get other debris that we've been leaving behind. So I'll just unlock this bay for now and I'll feel that out. But I also wanted to have lots of fuel, so let's take a look at the fuel modules. And it's not going to end up an SSTO at the moment. First of all, we don't have the rapier engine. Uh, second of all, I don't know what kind of jet engines we have right now. Uh, I, well, I guess we have the Panther. We got the Juno, Wheezy, Panther, and Goliath, but uh, we don't have the Ramjet. So that's, you know. A little bit rough. I don't think we can stick enough Panthers on this uh, to make it an SSTO. We're probably going to la launch it vertically with boosters is my plan. So we're not going to have a whole lot of just pure liquid fuel. At the moment though we don't seem to have much by way of uh, LFO Mark III parts do we? Hold on. Let me see, that's later in the tech tree? That's gonna be a hindrance, isn't it? But maybe we should use the nuke. Oh, we don't have the nuke. Gosh darn it, and here I thought we had a lot of science. Um, so yeah, the LFO fuselages are over here. Hmm, we may need more science. Or I could just go to a different form factor. Well, let me see if I can get some more science. I guess using the nuclear engine, the, the nerve, it'll be less science to get. It's only 300. If we try and get the LFO tanks, and you know, we'll use boosters, it'll just be really long burn times. Um, though we're missing the space, uh, the space plane tail fin, that's sad. Or these delta wings. A lot of stuff that I would like is obviously under this 550 one. But let me see where I can get some quick science so that we don't miss the window. Well, we have this little ghillie sat that is orbiting Gilly that has a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of fuel left. 
and well, I don't know which biomes it's been at since it doesn't plant flags or anything. Speaking of which, we haven't actually landed anybody on Gilly, have we? Uh, well, let's see. Flags should be displayed. Nope. Hmm. That's another thought. Um. Let me just check at Gilly Station if there's... I guess we can just have a Kerbal use their EVA pack, right? Um, Murpont? <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Well... Mm. Yep, that's a uh, camera change. I can't see my orbital components or anything. Let's just sort of make it decisive. What does it have on the map? Well, Murpon's gonna hit the surface at some point. <laughs> well, it's just a Kerbal drop. Well, last bit's gonna be sort of annoying with the time warp limitations. Let's see. Can we do an EV report? Oh, high over Gilly, apparently we've already done it. It's actually high over Gilly somehow. Well, uh, Gilly's lowlands. We can't transmit. Um, you know what? I'll reset that. We probably just want the EV report on the surface. And touchdown! Alright, so take surface sample. Keep. Uh, EV report. Keep. On a flag. Can't really do a crew report, can we? Okay. Gilly's sort of an asteroid for the B612 Foundation. Anyway, uh, Murpont on Gilly. I mean, I don't have a biome. I forgot the biome name. Shoot. I'm actually first. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, so what was the biome? Lowlands. Can we, like, reset the plaque? Nope. Okay. Or the flag. I guess we can't rename it. Okay. Um, we're not really at a good time to rendezvous with anything. We need to get to something that can transmit science. I guess we can just manually figure it out. Merpont departing the surface of Gilly. There's not going to be enough, though. We need another biome, but I think we should transmit this first. Oh, okay, that didn't work out right. Oh no, he's stumbling. Um, why? Oh, no, no, stop. Stop. Let him see us off. Well, shoot. Time warp. <laughs> ah, stock. Okay, which way are we going? Going this way. So hard to rendezvous like. Well, I guess we can at least set target. Okay. Well, but this is weird. Can we plot? I guess we can plot too. Nope. Can't add... Uh, nope, can't add maneuver node. Can't point in the right direction at all. That's a nice tangency point there. Okay, we'll, we'll work with that. So here, 62.5. Okay, so that's worse. This is harder than I wanted it to be. Well, let's just try and go negative relative velocity and see if that can work out for us. Oh no, we're suborbital now, but I don't know, maybe that's a temporary situation. Not really, but at least we're sort of planar. That's good. We're going which way? Oh, we're going down. 
Oh, 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 oh. Uh, okay, now we got something. Relative speed 28.4. I think we can make it. Gosh, darn it. Okay. Um, that'll be too close for a nice time warp. Okay, well, this was not what I was wanting to do. So, hmm. Maybe we should just have a smaller copy. We're not trying to carry a whole bunch of Kerbals anyway. But the problem is, using the Mark II cockpit with a big cargo bay is ugly. But it allows us to use the 2.5 meter tanks without getting new tanks, so there's that. I feel like I need some middle ground cockpit there. Something between the Mark II and the Mark III. Mark III is so bulky. Okay. Um, the station was around here somewhere. There it is. Ah, it keeps changing my camera. Stop! I haven't done this sort of thing before. And maybe I've done it once before, having a Kerbal land on something and come back to the station, but I don't recall. Fairly rare. Oh, this kick, this constant camera changing though, it's really irritating. Okay, board. All right. Well, let's see. Let's see about reviewing that stored data. Should I? I mean, yeah. I'll just transmit for now. We could go one more trip and then we'll probably get enough signs for the nuclear engine. But let's see if I can make an ugly ducking, duckling spacecraft in order to, or space plane in order to do the job. It won't be quite what I wanted, but if it can do it, it can do it. So. Okay, so my first progress report looks like this. So what we have here is uh, well, a lot of things to do with radial attachment points. I could have used cubic octagonal struts, but I used these radial attachment points. So there was uh, one on the back of the Mark II cockpit, which is the root part. And uh, to that radial attachment point, I added the, this adapter and then shifted it down and forward a bit so that we can add this tank and that nose. And then I, on the main node, or I don't... I. Uh, forget which one is which, but uh, I, I think on the main node I put this Mark II to 1.25 meter adapter and then the nose cone here and then the cargo bay and then another, another cargo bay and this adapter here which is currently unfueled because I was seeing the implications of doing this for our center of mass as our fuel goes down and the situation is it moves. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some tanks on the side here and put the engines on. We might have intakes. I don't know if we got to turn this into a space plane. This seems dodgy. But uh, so anyway, that's the shape I'm going with. It's not ideal, but it could be worse. And again, given the tanks that we have, at least these adapter tanks have both uh, liquid fuel and oxidizer. But otherwise, the other tanks are pure liquid fuel and we don't even have the nuclear engine to work with. So those will be just for jet engines if we choose to use them, and I'm not entirely sure I want to. So anyway, let me uh, think about this a little bit more, keeping in mind that we have to bring it back down through the atmosphere and land it somewhere. So, yeah. Okay, so this might be a horrifically bad idea, but this is what I've called Scavenger 1. And we are using three skiff engines here because they get Decent surface ISP and uh, better vacuum ISP, pretty good vacuum ISP, and a reasonable amount of thrust. So we can light them on the ground as part of launch. I intend to launch this vertically, but we'll flight test it uh, right now horizontally. It's not fully fueled because if we fully fuel the tank, the center mass does go pretty far forward. And that's fine. That's not going to be its landing situation anyway. So we're going to underfuel it, and uh, we'll set these tanks to drain first. Uh, we'll completely unfuel that, 
And so that one's draining first and uh, we'll have this one drain just a little bit behind that. So we've got the wing as you see, I don't know if it's too much wing, it's been a while since I built a plane in stock. Probably too much uh, rudder and yaw control here with the two vertical stabilizers, but they look good. And uh, if we look in the bay, uh, I'll show you the bay arrangement. We've got a remote controller here, so I don't have to try this um, crude. And we also have a docking port. We've got RCS. Ooh, those are clipping. I did not mean for them to cl uh, clip into each other. So those are separate. And that's good. We've got a big relay antenna because we'll need that, especially to help the little uh, tugs out. We are grabbing modules. I initially put the two tugs both on the bottom of the bay, but just in case we have uh, things to grab that are oriented differently, I decided maybe this will be better to have that on the tail there and this over here. And we'll see. Uh, depends on exactly what we're picking up. So, but in principle, we could fit two modules in here of the size that they've indicated. So that should be good enough. We'll see. But that's the idea. A little uh, RCS tanks and RCS ports on those. Uh, they've got batteries and no solar panels and the little claw juniors. And they'll have to bring the stuff back into the bay. So that's the idea. No air breathing engines. Uh, if we wanted air breathing engines, there could be a position for intakes here, but we're not doing that right now. Uh, the landing gear is placed so that the it is as close to right behind the center mass as I could without you know having it poke out in front of the leading edge of the wing. And uh, putting it as close to the center mass as possible helps with rotation off a runway, though technically we're only doing that during flight testing. And we want them as far out as possible and so I thought this was a reasonable place to put them and we have auto strutted the wings to grandparent part and that's across the board we've auto strutted this fuel tank to grandparent part not that one that one's attack attached to the tank directly anyway and we are using canards and we may might need more canards given how this is the center of lift but I don't know about the center lift vector. We'll see how it goes uh, during flight testing. You can see the controls. I uh, set the controls so that the outer controls do pitch and roll. Technically, they should only be doing roll. Ailerons only do roll. Uh, these do pitch only. These do pitch only. These do yaw only. And uh, the canard only does pitch. And we could want a body flap here, but since the center of mass is so far back already, I didn't want to. Center, uh, sorry, center of lift is so far back. Center of lift should be as close to the center of mass as possible without being, well, in front of it. <laughs> so uh, that helps with uh, maneuverability, though uh, heftier, like cargo planes, they, they can be further apart. Anyway, the RCS ports are interesting. I'm using the five ways for the first time. And so you can see uh, I set it to orthogonal five horn and that's because I don't want them on the bottom surface even though the heat tolerance is probably well 1500 it might blow up uh, so the idea is that the body will shield them somewhat and the bottom ports will blow that way but of course that means these uh, ports that are sort of supposed to be lateral are not in an ideal position so we have uh, auxiliary ports here. These are tiny little place anywhere, one linear RCS ports to help uh, counter the fact that that port is gonna be blowing like that. These will be blowing like that to counter that. And we've got those on the tail. I think that about sums up everything. Uh, so in front here, uh, I did have batteries and the solar panels here. That's how we're gonna get power. So we'll have to open that up to get the power. And does this have enough Delta V uh, to go all the way to Duna and back? Well, we are going to launch it with uh, launch stack and boosters as well. That'll have to be balanced all on its own. But for now, let me just flight test it and see if this is crazy or whether it'll get off the runway properly. 
First test, no crew. No crew. And we'll see how it goes. It is within our limits. So, my first plane in this series. It's a little bit ambitious for that sort of thing. Well, it's bouncy. Could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. We're going rocket engine off of the runway here. So, that's interesting. Center of thrust, hopefully close to the center of mass, maybe? Well, anyway. Let's see, here goes nothing. Why is there no sound? I'm confused why there's no sound. Maybe I'll have to restart the game. I was doing something else briefly. That might have gotten the sound off. Uh, okay, I don't feel it right now. Brakes, brakes. Oh, we need better brakes. Oh god. Oh god. No, no, it's going bad. It's going bad. The brakes are useless. And we can't even enjoy the explosion because of the sound problem. Well, fine. I'll recover that bit. It's something. Can you stop now? Hmm. Trying to stop was probably a bad idea. Well, this project is clearly going to be a budget sink rather than a budget source initially. Let me clean up some of this debris. Get what we can back from it. 24 funds. Not exactly great. Um, so... It didn't really want to rotate off of the runway very well. And I restarted to get the sound. Um, so, if it doesn't want to rotate off the runway very well, it means that the authority, the pitch authority is not good enough and the wheels are too far back. So I'm going to try and move these a little bit forward, even though it might not look great. Uh, stability was fine, so maybe I'll tuck them in a little bit more so they don't poke out so much. So... That could be better. And... Uh, we could move the wing up overall. But... I sort of wanted these flaps to be covering those engines at least. So maybe not. Maybe we'll move this canard forward. Now I'll also give it more of a lever arm. Speed wise we should be fine. Uh, wing wise we might be a little, but we might be underdoing it. And there's no real lift to this part of the body. Uh, there might be some on the Mark III and the Mark II pieces. Well, I'll give it a go. Let's make sure we don't have crew on board. And we'll see if this works out better. Maybe I should make it lighter. Let's just completely unfuel that. That's a little bit tight. Um, eventually that's going to be iffy. I'll keep this to negative 10 and have it use its fuel at the same time. Uh-oh. Uh, okay, so the wheels are too far back. I think I had right the first time. Recover vessel. <laughs> the center of mass decided to move on me. Yeah, you saw where it was before. Hmm. Very suspicious. Okay. Well, it didn't lose the wing pieces, and it's flopping back to its nose gear, so it's right on the edge. That's good, I suppose. Oh, wait. Um, can we reaction wheel that down? Well, maybe the engines can. Uh, oh, this is not good.
Äh, oh, okay, 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 okay. The brakes are useless. Brakes are useless. I'm not too sure about landing with this thing if the brakes are gonna be like this. We're even dragging our tail on the ground and it can't slow down faster than this. Hmm. The length of the forward landing gear being so short also means that we're pointing nose downward, assuming that it doesn't flop on its tail, so maybe I'll tuck them in like that. Even though the doors then are above the wings, which is unsightly, and I was trying to avoid that, but... Well... Sometimes we have to be practical about such things. Um, why is it turning to the right? Why? Why are you turning to the right? <laughs> I swear. Okay... Fine, make it difficult for me. Well, at least it's got the nose on the ground this time. I feel like... Oh, there we go. Nose wheel steering. There we go. A lot more nose wheel steering, please. I mean, we will get up to a sufficient speed where I can take off, darn it. If only by main force. <laughs> uh... Anyway, the main thing is how it handles when it's empty, because that's how it's going to be coming back down, hopefully. We should probably put one of those things that allow um, the, the venting of the propellants, the dumping of propellants. Anyway, now it worked. Looks like uh, nearly full of fuel, or mostly full of fuel. We're talking about a stall speed of about 150, so definitely not supposed to take off on its own. It turns badly. <laughs> it turns badly. Well, in principle, we are parallel to the runway. But... Uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to slow down very well, am I? Maybe air brakes. I should have put the air brakes on. I don't want to pass Mach 1. That's not useful at this point. Using a lot of pitch authority just to hold itself like this. So it doesn't have enough lift. I don't want to put too much more wing, though, because... Well, we're going to be going out to Duna. I don't want to carry that much wing with me. Just enough to slow down. And potentially glide to a landing. We'll see if we can make a landing. Well, we'll simulate how it goes with some extra weight. So, I'll shut down there and see if we can do a landing. Um, should be in... Locked camera. We're dropping like a rock. This is pretty bad, actually. Yeah, we're very dropping like a rock. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm gonna make the runway. I don't think so. I'll need to use some fuel. Again, my intention on the way back from Duna is to land anywhere on um, Kerbin will be fine. But for a test flight, though, I mean, we lose speed quickly here. I had the brakes on on the runway, we didn't lose speed like this. It's impressive. The air creates tremendous drag. But can we stop? <laughs> that is the question. Oh, oh, I, I bounced. Oh, I bounced again. Wow, I didn't think I had that much extra lift. Oh, okay, well, that works better than braking, actually. <laughs> bouncy, bouncy.
Well, uh, sort of a success. Sort of a success. No parts broken this time. Development of that went a little bit long. And so I'm going to do the next part next time, which I think we'll go with it and see what happens. Um, maybe I'll put some extra wing on it. I'll think about that, but we have to slap it onto a launcher. And so we'll do rudimentary shuttle dynamics in the next video. There may be explosions. This, uh, let's face it, we are now, once we are starting to do space planes, we, we have the increased potential for explosions here on Kerbin. So look forward to that. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.